Hey guys, Crewman here, and today I'm here to talk about Aurethrum mining. So in this video, I'm not going to really go in depth about Aurethrum uh, as far as a token too much. I'll link mine some tens video down below, which you should really watch. It's fantastic. It basically goes over the coin and what they're trying to do. And since it's one of the first videos released, he shows you an alternative way on how just to mine it using the miners that he's shown. It's a different way to mine. Um, and mine's changed a little bit, but it certainly can't help to get a different take on how to mine it. So I'll link that down below. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to triple mine Aurethrium with RxD and Zill using Gminer because in my humble opinion, Gminer is the best miner and I believe you should be triple mining. Okay, so before we get going, I want to state a few disclaimers. This guide is for NVIDIA only, specifically 30 series and 40 series. And for 30 series, it's really only for uh, 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3070 Ti, as I do not have anything above that mining this right now. And for the 40 series, it's generic for all the 40 series. I don't have any Turing GPUs on this, and I don't have any AMD GPUs on this coin either. So keep that in mind. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get HiveOS set up to make sure it works. So you need to make sure your HiveOS is updated to the latest settings. And then what you need to do is you need to have a MetaMask wallet set up. So I'll link down below what you need to add and I'll put it on the screen right here so you can see it. You need to add the following settings for your MetaMask. So go ahead and pause this video if you need to get those. So once that's done, uh, setting you need to do, now this is optional. I prefer to mine on K1 pool because it has the best Zill yield. And to make sure you get the Zill pool fee, you need to put another coin on K1 as well. And I use the RxD pool for K1. Um, you know, you get the most seal yield and that is, you know, up to 15 to 20% of your profit. So I think that's very important to me or important that you do it. Another thing with K1 is if you could, it would very much help me if you use my referral link. I will get 0.1 of a single percent of your mining rewards and it would help my channel greatly. Now that's completely optional. I would appreciate it if you do it, but you don't have to either way. So I have a link for my referral code down below. And then you, if you don't want to use that, you just join without that code. So, but either way, whether you use my code or not, you should be using K1 pool. So once you have everything done, once all of that is done, you need to create your flight sheet. It needs to primarily be set up as Aurethrium or RTH for the first coin, and then RxD as a secondary coin. Uh, I'll have that right on the screen. Again, feel free to pause at any time to make sure you have my settings copied. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna copy the extra parameters, which I'll have down below. Now remember, at the end of the day, Aurethrium is an offshoot of ETH. So a lot of your ETH settings will be uh, applicable here. Now I know it's been a while since a lot of us have mined an ETH hash type coin. So like me, you know, I had a little bit of a learning curve getting back into this, but once you get the hang of it, it all starts to flood back. Okay, so a few things I wanna list about the parameters of, the, um, of mining Aurethrium and some tweaks that I made that maybe will help. So one of the first things I noticed was that I'm not totally sure if LHR matters, but a few of my cards that I know are LHR are just getting left less hash. And I've been messing around with them and I can't seem to get them uh, hashing a little more than like half of what the other cards are hashing. So if you guys have any issue or you think you found a solution with that, or if you've even seen the same problem as me, please let me know in the comments down below. So the first tweak I wanna go over is the A12R command. Now I'll put a link for the Regal Miner README down below so you can understand how their parameters work. It's basically Regal's version of DI, of DI mining. The higher the R number, the more RxD you will mine at the cost of more power. I prefer setting a power limit so you don't accidentally trip it and you see how far you can push. Um, I have found as far as power limit between 120 and 130 watts is working best for me. And I'm using R6 as the best setting I think as far as the balance of RxD and ETH. Um, you know, I'm getting about, uh, as you can see on the miner that I'm sharing, I'm getting about 59 um, mega hash on Ethereum and I'm getting about 335 uh, mega hash on RxD. And then, you know, I'm getting about the same 60 mega hash on Zill. Now, you know, if you, you, you want to put more power on it, you want to mine more RxD, you can definitely do that by raising the R number. Uh, with the 40 series, I have found that if you, you want to use R8 on the lower cards, like the 4060 Ti or the 4060 through the 4070 Ti, and R18 on the 4080 and the 4090. 
I'll show my 4090 settings right above here. They're not perfect. I'm trying to find the balance between using too much power and getting too much erythium. I still haven't found what I've liked. This is what I find acceptable. I'm going to spend some more time on the 40 series and maybe release an update, an updated video in the future. Another thing for the 30 series is that you want to start by setting the mem clock at 1200, you know, like we would do before when we were mining ETH. But if you're not getting the hash you want, you want to push it higher. You know, I have some rigs that are at 1200 and I have some that are pushing 14 or 1500. It really just depends on the rig and the card and how much uh, erythium hash you want. Uh, now, one more thing, and I think this one is important, uh, and I got to thank T-Swift for, bring, for bringing this up in our Sinner Solos Discord chat. And I want to thank everybody else there who helped me with my overclocks. Uh, you know who you guys are. Thank you very much. If you have a rig that you're worried about getting too hot in this weather and you don't really want to push ETH too much because we all know that ETH takes a toll on your GPUs, you can use the lock mem clock command for improved efficiency. You end up with about 37 mega hash and you get about 220 RxD, but what you can do is you can push the R value to about 9 and you'll end up with about the same RxD that you were getting when you don't have that command up. You just ease back on the core a little bit and you save your cards from baking in these hot temperatures. I have a few rigs on I have a few rigs on these settings in order to reduce the heat and you know I know I have some cards that tend to run hotter or not. Let me go into my shed to show you some specific examples of that. But other than that, that's the basics for mining RxD, for mining RxD, Erythium, and Zill. Um, and if you have any questions, again, please put them in the comments down below. Otherwise, let's get to my shed tour. So now that I showed you how to triple mine, and I was talking about using the mem clock uh, at 5,000 to adjust your power level, I wanted to explain what I meant. So I have some rigs, right? Like this one, for example, which some of these GPUs tend to run really hot. So what I'm doing is I'm running the mem clock on these ones to lower the uh, areth, areth, uh hash rate. I'm calling it areth for now the erythrium hash rate uh, to keep these ones cooler. And then for this 3070 Ti rig, I don't want to I don't want to overpower these because you can get these things up to easily 200 watts and I don't want to do that. So I'm basically having them mine like 3070s at about 110 watts, which is fine. And then another example, this rig has some GPUs that tend to get hot, this 11 by 3070 rig. So I'm doing the same thing. And finally, uh, I will not be putting this 3080 rig on this for, on Ari, um, Arethium for now on, for now anyway, because it's hot right now, and I don't feel like melting the VRAM on them. So, but when you you know when I have these other rigs, which I know run cool, like this 6x3070 rig, this 6x3070 rig, and this 8 by or this 8x3070 rig, I will be. Um, using those at the normal hash rate. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this mining tutorial helped and I hope me using this real life example of my shed to explain why I'm, why I'm using the mem tweak or not uh, will help you understand what I'm talking about. I hope you guys uh, enjoy and enjoy mining and thank you guys for watching. Fruit Man out.